so uh, after this introspection about uh, our society that I suggest you something a bit lighter <laughs> also due to the time it's going to be more a uh, showcase of the kind of uh, application you can have on uh, like uh, local green deals based on uh, airborne uh, acquisition and for the ones of you that uh, follow the Thomas uh, presentation this afternoon uh, that's the hyperspectral part. Okay, so briefly, usage. Uh, we already mentioned a lot of uh, project and system project about uh, Green Deal, and this is part of the same code. And simply, we have four pilots, and I'm going to present uh, more on Ferrara and Graz. So, briefly, about the workflow that uh, led to user cases definition, but uh, we can skip that. and. Like these are some requirements uh, placed by the municipalities and for two different use cases. But the interesting part is like uh, data availability. So for example, for Ferrara, uh, thanks to kind of, I mean, there are some satellite uh, sensors here as well, but uh, the data available uh, and the newly available data are mainly due to kind of uh, airborne acquisition in particular. Uh, RGBI images uh, that uh, for Ferrari are not available in the oblique, but uh, we have for Graz. Uh, the, of course, the derived orthophotos, the light upon cloud, and the derived uh, surface models or the terrain models, the hyperspectral images and their derivation into the surface material classification or the species, and the thermal images, of course. So all the data uh, have been already published on uh, the municipality website, uh, data repository, and they are searchable with the tag uh, usage use cases, if you actually interested uh, to maybe apply some of your algorithms, uh, since they are quite uh, high resolution data. And yeah, there are kind of uh, 27 data set so far, and we'll see what's next. So uh, about uh, thermal images, uh, the, the idea of the city is to use them to develop, uh, to detect uh, heating dispersion during winter. And uh, as I was showing this morning, I like, are involved into the estimation of urbanitizing. Uh, here we can see the uh, night acquisition and the daylight acquisition, com like a brief comparison and the orthophoto at 10 centimeters. Then from hyperspectral images, you can, I mean, you can derive a lot of things, but in this case, uh, the surface classification based on the spectral and on these uh, classes has been derived uh, and this lead them to the computation of uh, like indices uh, for different purpose. And in this case, they, they've been aggregated uh, like on hexagon, like just to uh, get a better like feeling of the indices, uh, variation of the seat. Uh, three species identification. Uh, Thomas already showed that uh, this afternoon, but uh, briefly here, like the use case in Ferrara and the municipality have a repository of actual uh, public uh, trees, but I wanted to map also private trees. And so then uh, this work has been done on hyperspectral images uh, to retrieve also private uh, kind of uh, tree species. And uh, then if you also do the geometrical let's say part with LIDAR, airborne LIDAR, you can also derive a kind of uh, overall biomass. Uh, briefly here on Graz, uh, so on Graz the thermal images are available at uh, half a meter. And uh, just since we are for at observation workshop, a uh, brief uh, comparison with the actual uh, Landsat uh, acquisition over the city, like just three days apart. And uh, let's say uh, here Landsat can capture the major trends over the city, but uh, cannot, uh, let's say, have the granularity on, of course, the resolution on the street level. But uh, it's interesting, I think that, uh, the major spot within the uh, like grass city are picked up and the, on the right, the difference map just 
compression quicker. So what you can do with a lot of images from Airborne, you can construct a dense uh, point cloud. In this case, the University of Graz, just uh, as an example. So on the left, uh, the, we just uh, show the case where you use just the natural images. Uh, meanwhile, if you fly and the sensor have five cameras, uh, you can do a really nice uh, reconstruction, like a geometrically precise uh, reconstruction uh, with also the facades. And this helping a lot in the, the construction of uh, uh, building city models, and in particular, like, I mean, more basic uh, LOD one where it's just the footprint and the height, but you can get ahead and have a level of detail too, uh, where essentially you also identify the major feature of, for example, the roofs. And this is the comparison between the dense by cloud and the reconstructed, uh, automatically reconstructed level of detail too. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, there are methodologies to improve also uh, higher granularity of, for example, that also the chimneys, in this case, are neglected. Uh, what can you do with point cloud segmentation? Well, first you segment the point cloud, like in this case was a random forest. And uh, once you kind of understand what's the roof, where is the facade, and what's the background and vegetation, you can start thinking about uh, what will be the photovoltaic potential of the facade. Because, I mean, we are used to uh, apply solar panels on the roof. And as you can see here, the estimation of the radiation over the roof is higher, but uh, probably on large buildings like this one uh, or in public buildings uh, and the technology now allows, uh, you can start thinking about uh, using facades to produce energy. Of course, not all the facade, but in order to get uh, count of this, you need to have the measurement. And on the graph on the top, uh, well, on the left is just a validation against uh, the University of Graz uh, weather station radiometric that is located here. And on the right, you see kind of uh, a normal approach uh, on a raster uh, digital surface model against uh, Vostok uh, implemented on the point cloud. So just the roof and the roof plus facades contribution. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, of course, with the higher resolute uh, ortho photo images, uh, like uh, deep learning uh, can be applied and is a kind of more available uh, than to extract uh, building footprints. And then from building footprints, you can use it uh, to get other metrics. Uh, okay, from geometry, uh, just the LiDAR data, you can get, uh, as I was mentioned before, single tree identification. So that was the species, and now it's about geometry. And so uh, you are able to, in particular, in the urban environment, it's easier, as you can see here. Uh, in dense kind of forest uh, environment, it's a bit more tricky. But you can retrieve the single identities and then compare uh, to the species, uh, in that case, raster, and try to like um, estimate the biomass. And this just, I mean, uh, visualization metrics about like uh, the height thanks to the dense point cloud and crown areas. Well, this is nothing more the same. Uh, so in summary, uh, I mean, uh, airborne uh, data are really useful for like local green deal and city level uh, data spaces uh, in the sense that uh, municipality need uh, resolute data i think to uh, understand and to plan properly their uh, environment uh, of course uh, earth observation data play a um, big role because the cost of uh, airborne acquisition are really uh, really high compared to satellite and uh, for the municipality, I mean, and uh, then uh, those acquisitions are generally one shot or let's say if well, once a year. So uh, we need a way to bridge the two kind of uh, data sources, I think, and get more insights. Okay, so that was my presentation about uh, the usage project and just 
uh, showcase of the possible application. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anayu, for the brilliant presentation. It was really light. Yes. Any questions? Thank you very for the very nice presentation. Um, I have a rather a comment than a, sure. uh, a question. If you go back six slides to the LIDAR, exactly this one. Um, I uh, would recommend you to use another color map. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> because the, the jet color map has been proven to uh, potentially kill people. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> not here in this case, but it's actually proven that in uh, in medical applications, even though liked more by uh, uh, doctors, uh, medical doctors, um, the jet color map um, creates breaks in the data okay. that you uh, should not like that you should not see. So it. I cannot interpret this color map really because it creates artificial breaks okay. in 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 the data. So it, uh, additionally, if I would be color blind and I maybe we have a red green uh, uh, color blind person in in the room, I don't know, but uh, then I could could confuse uh, which or I I couldn't see the break between the green and the red. So um, I would highly recommend you uh, to use another color map and uh, even MATLAB, uh, MATLAB packages have been adapted uh, because the new color map is a Parula color map and the uh, Python people have Virdris. So uh, I highly recommend to use another color map.